and welcome back to Wolf vs. Ponies. I am Wolf, and today we are going to be reviewing Gauntlet of Fire, which is just a complete ripoff from the title Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, which also included a trial. Aside from that complete ripoff of a title, let, let us delve into the Spike episode, which will be my first Spike episode to review. It starts off with Rarity playing Minecraft to get gems for some design, I'm guessing. She doesn't really explain it. Until Spike starts to glow because he's being summoned by the Lord of Dragons. No, not that one. Though it would be really awesome to see a freaking human in this series that also exists in the equine universe. So we find out that somehow Celestia and Luna know that, yes, he is being summoned and he goes to the Dragon Realm, as I'm just going to call it now. Although it's not really explained how he got there so fast. I mean, he can't fly, and Twilight doesn't really know where it is, so she couldn't teleport, so I'm guessing he ran there. Anyway, so, due to this meeting, it appears that Lord Nefarian himself, I mean, this Dragon Lord, is apparently aging, and he is passing on his torch, or staff, if you will, to the next Dragon King, in which his daughter, slash Princess Ember, wants to become the next leader. Which, yeah, that would make a lot more sense if she took over, as she is next in line. But, no, Mr. I'm the Dragon Lord decides that he's created a trial to prove who, who will be the next king. You know, not pass it down to my daughter because she's too small and fragile, I'm guessing. So, yes. Oh, yeah, we also get to meet the Dragon Douches, but mainly just Gargle, which I still hate and I'm pretty sure a lot of other people do. So yeah, if you haven't guessed it, Ember is pretty much shipping for Spike throughout this entire episode. He teaches her friendship because she doesn't see it, because dragons don't have friends. And a lot of the dialogue between the two is kind of funny because of that lack of friendship. Oh yeah, there's also some of these drag some of these dragons now remind me of Game of Thrones with the White Hill family. So, the Gauntlet of Fire starts, mainly because Spike has to enter it, otherwise two of the Dragon Rulers are going to destroy Equestria. One of them for pillows, the other for vengeance. And the one voiced by Nicole Oliver wasn't going to do anything with it. But yeah, Spike now has to enter it. So, as he does, it proves that this Gauntlet really is tough, as we have giant sea worms and weird caverns that had to be designed by the same people who tried to stop Indiana Jones. Oh yeah, throughout the entire episode, it's just shipping between Spike and Ember, which, actually, I support the ship. It's pretty good. Ember is a complete soon today. If you don't know what a soon today is, it's pretty much a bitch on the outside, but they have redeemable qualities or a heart of gold. I'm all for Spike and Princess Ember. Also, throughout this entire episode, we have Gargle being a complete ass to Spike. Gee, that's not forced upon them. Oh, no, I want vengeance. Oh, so stupid. It's like, why? Also, there were so many occasions where they could have just killed off Gargle, but because they have to keep the TVY rating, he just gets hit into giant walls by giant sharp-edged crystals, or gets hit by a boulder in the sky, only to get crushed on the ground, but somehow survive. But when Ember first gets hit by water, she's like drowning. She looks like she's going to die just from that one hit. How weak are these dragons to water and rocks? It's like, come on! Also through the entire episode, we have these smaller dragons. But we've seen there are giant ass dragons in Equestria. In the episode Dragonshire or Spike's Quest, we've seen these giant dragons on the outer rim of the volcano. But no, these teenager ones are the best new leaders because they are the big and strong ones. Hello, there are giant dragons across Equestria, dumbass. Boy. But this is also almost a complete repeat of Spike's Quest. Spike needs to find himself, or he needs to become the next Dragon King, which would have made for a more interesting story. It would have been awesome to see Spike actually become respected, not just by the Crystal Empire, but by dragons. He could have led them on a path to righteousness or friendship, but no, he has to stay as a third-class citizen in Equestria. Come on, Riders, Spike is a good character. Let him show his good qualities. He understands friendship. He probably understands b friendship better than Twilight does. Also, it was brought to my attention by Catastrophe that this entire episode mirrors one of Wonder Woman's stories where there was a gladiator match for some magical armor that whoever won the gladiator battle would gain it and become the strongest Amazonian warrior. Of course, Wonder Woman's mother did not want her to take part in it. However, she disguised herself as a warrior and won it at the end only to reveal herself just like how Ember does. 
Dressed as a gladiator, goes through the entire thing, shows off to her father that she's the new leader. At the end, it's really weird with Twilight as well, because she says that now they have a powerful new ally. That implies something, writers. Is there going to be a war coming soon? I wish we had to see more about this dragon culture as well. If Spike was the leader, we could have seen a lot more about it and allow him to set a true draconic society up. But no, he's just Spike. What could he do? I may laugh at Spike getting hurt or crying because that's funny, but in this episode, I actually wanted to see Spike become the next Dragon King. He would have been a great Dragon King. It would have been amazing to see him become a leader and show how Twilight has affected him. He could have done so much, but no, the writers are keeping him down. Why? Why are you doing this, writers? I, I hate you! This could have been a great arc for Spike, better than that rarity arc you forced upon us. So, my rating for this episode will have to be a 6, 7, or 8. I really do like this episode. The story is great, but it still has room for improvement. Radiant Twilight didn't need to be in it. Like, seriously, they played no part in it. They didn't help Spike one bit. They were always in disguise. What were they for? Just as a checkpoint save system? Plus, Ember even came back for Spike because of what Spike taught her, which still proves why he'd be an awesome king. This is probably one of my favorite Spike episodes. Although that doesn't say much because he's only had roughly five episodes to himself. This has been Wolf vs. Ponies. You little fuck! That's how you talk to a lord! You foresters have shit on us for generations. Well, now the Starks are no longer around to have your back, are they? We're the power in the north now. You will learn some fucking humility. Or this won't be the last lesson I teach you, foresters! I bet this makes you angry, eh? You probably want to get up and hit me. Are you going to be a good little forester, learn your lesson, and stay down? Don't you dare! You stay down! I'm in charge here! But your family has suffered. 